talking to senior <laughs> advocate Mr. Fali Nariman. So we moved to the Official Secret Act and uh, this legislation was originally enacted by the British to protect the secrets, official secrets. Uh, over the years now, it is now continued in independent India to protect officials. Now, this is what uh, Fali has written in the book uh, before the memory fades and uh, I would request him to illuminate the viewers about this. Yeah, let me tell you. You see, <coughs> when I was in college in British India, <coughs> Way back in the 1940s, it used to be jokingly suggested that the fall of the British Empire began with the building of country clubs. Because once the British had a country club, what was the point of it unless you could keep somebody out? Yes. <laughs> Not take somebody yes. in. It would be exclusive. Something exclusive. Something yes. exclusive. And when the locals or the na natives as they call them. <coughs> they bred a lot of justifiable resentment. Yes. <coughs> so my great point is that the great divide, <coughs> this wall of separation really started <coughs> with the British Country Club. Yes. For instance, I still remember Sir Jamsaji Kanga telling me, that in the Willingdon Sports Club. Yes. Mumbai. Mumbai. Where Lord Willingdon was invited for lunch. Yes. <coughs> and ultimately, he was the person who regaled the audience by telling them. Yes. That why this club was, was set up in, in his own name was because when before that club when there was only one club called the Baikala club yes where only British and the whites were permitted yes when they invited the then home member I forget his name now he was yes, an sir. Indian okay and he, he was invited for lunch he accepted the lunch invitation when he came there he was said, Denied sorry, entry. natives are no, not, not permitted. And that's where Lord Willingdon got the, the first idea. idea of starting a club which was cosmopolitan, where yes, Indians sir. would also be there. Yes. This is what Sir Jamsaji Kanga, the, my senior. Okay. About the Wellington really, Club. About yes. the Wellington, Wellington Club, Sports Club. Yes. So therefore, this wall of separation yes. was the problem. But you must also know that the British could afford to operate behind the wall of separation because they ruled. They were the they, rulers. They were the rulers. They were not the democratically yes. elected <laughs> governors yes. or uh, representatives yes. of the people. They, they ruled and they did not govern. Yes. And hence they faced few problems when it came to governance. Mm. But the rulers had one great quality which I must mention. They instilled in their officials a high sense of idealism in government service. And this went a long way. It was important that an official in government remained first and last a public servant in the service of the people. When the British left, we discarded that idealism. Okay. This is unfortunate, yes. which had inspired generations of public officials in British India. Officialdom in independent India has, in my view, become more insular, more secretive since independence. Okay. And hence, this Official Secrets Act yes. passed in vintage year 1923 yes. by the British Indian government at the time, which remains on the statute book, even, which, now. even after the constitution. Yes is a standing threat to open government. As some wit accurately remarked, it was enacted and continues in force not to protect secrets, but to protect okay. officials. officials. Of course, this was said before the enactment of the Right to Information Act of 2005, yes. which had done wonders for open government. The RTI Act has effectuated a redistribution of political power. Okay. 
and ensuring as much as a law can ensure good governance. But that again, yes. unfortunately, this act is now reduced almost to a dead letter yes. by simply government not filling up the posts post. that lie vacant. Of the RTI, as under you the RTI. Know. <coughs> but and that's, been, yes, a compla that's yes. been a complaint now. Yes. I would request you to clarify. You said that earlier the officers, uh, there was a sense of idealism in that in the British days. Yes. Uh, would you say that this sense of idealism uh, was more important than their being as part of the imperial or uh, the yes, empire? Yes, 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 yes. It was more important to them. Okay. Yes. Because this was in the sense the British civil services yes. are totally distinct from the government. They, they express yes. their views un, unfettered or unhindered by anything at all. Okay. And that, that's a tradition which unfortunately which the civil service yes. had instilled in all officials. Their spirit. Their spirit. Yes. The spirit of civil service that you must give right advice yes. whether the man likes it or doesn't like it. Okay. He may resent it because yes. he has no control over well, we, uh, no one is going to pull him up because these yes. are all on the file. Yes. No one knows. Yes. This is not made public. So the ultimate decision is of the minister. But he must be informed. So Correctly. the right to yes. information is a, such a very important thing. But yes. that's why we pass the information, right to information act. But they find it, the yes. present government yes. and the previous yeah. government found it very inconvenient sometimes. To give, info, to give genuine information. So what they do is now not appoint officials <laughs> to fill yes. the post. So there's no yes, post yes, at yes, all. So yes. what do you do? You write a letter yes. to the commissioner. He's not yet appointed. When he's appointed, then yes. he will give you the Quite information. Quite right, sir.